On September 23rd, 1993, the International Olympics Committee met in Monte Carlo to finally decide who would be the host of the 2000 Olympic Games. There were five cities bidding to host, including Beijing, Manchester, Berlin, Istanbul, and Sydney. And at 8.17pm local time, the committee formally selected Sydney as the host for the Games. Now, the next steps were to get to work preparing Sydney to be able to, well, host the Games. And this doesn't only include constructing the stadiums, arenas, and centers which the games were to be held, but also where the competing athletes would be housed. To that, Australia would choose this mostly unused land less than a kilometer large to create the Newington Athletes Village. And this land was in a pretty good spot. It was just adjacent to the area that would become Sydney Olympic Park. It's green and forested and has nearby waterfronts including the Haslam's Creek and Parramatta River. And Australia wanted to use this site to showcase the best planning, prestige and infrastructure the country had to offer. The site's development would fall into the hands of two of Australia's largest developers, Marvac and Lendlease, who together would create the Newington Development Plan. So, how was Marvac and Lendlease going to try to create the most prestigious athlete village in Olympic history? Well, the two developers factored in several variables that they believed would be important. The developers didn't want the Newington Village to be the forerunner of just luxury accommodation for Olympians, but also of accommodating post-Olympics residents, of long-term planning, of business developments, and of environmental sustainability. The development plan would be formally secured by the New South Wales government in 1996. And this was the plan as follows. From the get-go, Marvac and Lendlease wanted to make sure that, the New that Newington would be able to survive as a residential suburb after the 2000 Olympics concluded. So, they split up the site into three precincts. The first precinct, covering the south portion, would predominantly consist of low-density housing intended for non-Olympic residents, as well as accommodating the new Newington Public School. The second precinct, covering the middle portion, would be the actual athlete village, and the third precinct covering the north portion would contain the village centre, a business park, and both medium density housing like apartments and then the regular low density housing. In regards to road infrastructure, the project took the interesting route of avoiding traffic lights for four-way intersections, instead opting for roundabouts along the site's main road, Newington Boulevard, which had been probably decided to help the traffic flow smoother. Then, one of the project's key selling points was its eco-friendly design, with the 2000 Olympics at the time having been marketed as the Green Olympics. 
This is ironic considering Australia's stances on other environmental issues, but just focusing on the Newington village, to achieve this eco-friendly design, Marvac and Lentleys were to construct all the homes pre-installed with rooftop solar panels and the water systems to feature recyclability. Essentially meaning that any wastewater produced by homes would be treated and be reusable, saving residents water. Some other good points that I forgot to mention in my script is that all of the homes are built in with water and energy efficient appliances and the construction process involved recycling construction waste and reusing buildings. And to place further emphasis onto the green nature of the site, the project would also include multiple parks, including the Cumberland, Pier de Cooperton, Burrowing and Blanca's Rowan, Rowan Park, and then walking tracks like the Louise Sauvage pathway along Haslam's Creek. The project wasn't completely hassle-free, however as Marvac and Lentleys would get into disagreements with the New South Wales government about the details. For example, when it came to the positioning of apartments and houses along the waterfront, Marvac's co-founder Bob Hamilton wanted low-rise apartments sat along the Haslam's Creek overlooking the Olympic Stadium. But then the government requested that houses be built instead with apartments behind, which Hamilton saw as ridiculous because, quote, the three billion people around the world watching the games would just see from the stadium lots of flat roofs instead of a clearly defined edge. And many more people would have outlooks and views than if you had houses there. These disagreements on very particular details almost cost the entire project a few times, with that example I mentioned apparently having made Bob Hamilton stand up and say, sorry, it won't be going ahead, before walking out on the government officials. But, even with these occasional arguments, the project pretty much went on as intended. Besides the infrastructure and facilities for Newington's long-term residents, Marvac and Lentleys wanted to give the Olympian athletes homes that although were temporary, were actual homes that someone could live in and afford. This was important to the developers as by this point in history, most athlete villages were often made of high rises in rundown areas or of dwellings that were expensive and quickly abandoned following the Olympic Games. The construction was going well. But Two years in, on September 24th, 1998, the project experienced its first death during Newington's development. A man named Thomas Pascoe, who was a father to three and working as one of the project's scaffolders. He had been working on an incomplete scaffold when bricks suddenly fell from three and a half meters above, striking him dead. This monument, erected in Pier de Cooperton Park, reads, In memory of Thomas John Pascoe, a fatality during the construction of the Olympic 2000 village. Thursday, September 24th, 1998. Remembered by his family, 
workmates, and trade union. This would be thankfully the only tragedy during the village's development. But it is still important to remember. The next month, in the October of 1998, the first of Newington's residential homes would go onto the market for between 250 to over $500,000, or for around 442800 to over 885000 when adjusted for inflation. And a few years later would come the main event, the 2000 Sydney Olympics. The Newington Athletes Village has been completed and the Olympians will be arriving soon. But there aren't actually enough bedrooms in the village's homes to accommodate all the Olympians. For this, the developers had repurposed parts temporarily of the houses such as garages to be additional bedrooms and modular units were set up in backyards, allowing for example a four bedroom home to suddenly house up to 24 people. And this was a fair compromise. As, for example, Olympians wouldn't really need to park any cars in garages anyway, as they were mostly just taking buses around. The outcome of this year's long project was seen as phenomenal, with Peter Cotton, Marvac's national practice director at the time, stating that when the athletes arrived, they were startled to find they had real, well-built well homes to live in, with marble bathrooms and courtyards they could style to express their own countries. It became a benchmark for planning and developing greenfield sites, and a lot of the things we put in, like the solar panels, batteries, and cross-ventilation, have now become standard practice. The Newington Village project would go on to receive up to 36 building, architecture, and design awards with 2002 seeing it winning the Royal Australian Institute of Architects Premier's Award. It has influenced modern urban design, not only in Australia, but also around the world. This is Newington as it is today. As of the 2021 consensus, Newington has more than 5,600 residents with 2,065 dwellings. All of the parks, the primary school, the village centre and business park exist as they did in the original project plan. The village centre is actually named the Newington Marketplace. It's home to a local Woolworths, a medical center, plenty of Asian restaurants and cafes, a subway, then other places for dining like fishbowl and yum yum kebabs. Across the marketplace's east side, there are multiple country flags as you can see here. Then of course, the Australian flag up in the sky in its glory. The marketplace also has the office for the Newington Village Real Estate, which has these signs about Olympian, the Olympian history behind street names. Yes, street names.
Pretty much most of the streets in Newington are named after athletes, such as Ali Ali Parade, named after Muhammad Ali. Then there's also a series of conjoining roads around the marketplace named after continents, including the Avenue of Europe, Avenue of the Americas, Avenue of Asia, of Africa, and the Avenue of Oceania. Oceania. And so, this all began from just a need. A need to not only have, well, a place for the 2000s Olympians to stay, but also a need to change the status quo. The status quo of architecture, of design, and how suburbs and homes are built. Although such design elements are pretty standard nowadays, at the time they weren't, and plenty of them were inspired by just this little suburb. Despite literally being less than a square kilometer large and being pretty obscure, it has had a tremendous impact on how new sites are developed around the world, how we can make them better, more eco-friendly, more livable, and greener.